another sesh on business ownership structures. When we're talking about business ownership structures, you're thinking about sole traders, partnerships, private limited companies, and public limited companies. Now, when you are having a longer question on business ownership structures, and you might be asked to analyze, it could be the, the pros or the cons of a particular business ownership structure, or you're trying to recommend a particular business ownership structure over another one. The way to do it and the thing to think about is PLUMS. PLUMS is beautiful. PLUMS stands for Profit Distribution, Liability, Limited or Unlimited, that's the L and the U, Management and Control, and Sources of Finance Available. So we're going to go through all of the things in PLUMS for sole traders, partnerships, private limited companies and public limited companies. And we'll start with profit distribution. So profit distribution in the case of a sole trader, well the profits are 100% yours. But the reality is, in the real world, that if you're a sole trader, you've got less tax flexibility versus if you are an entrepreneur that instead of setting up as a sole trader, set up as a private limited company. Because in that case, you could pay yourself a wage, a salary, up to the personal tax allowance and thereafter pay yourself in dividends and therefore be more creative and flexible to tax. In terms of profit distribution for partnerships, well, Partnerships is going to be, the profits will be shared to what the deeds of partnerships say. So if the deeds of partnerships say the profits between the two partners will be split 60-40, well then that's how the profits will be split. If it says 50-50, they'll be split as so, 50-50. But I guess in the case of the 50-50, well what if one of those partners is simply making more sales, making more revenue, just frankly doing much more than the other partner? Well, it's not going to be done on performance. The way that the profits will be distributed will be based on the deeds of partnership. So that's different to the actual performance of each partner. And that could cause some beef if you're one of those partners and you're doing so much more than the other partner. Profit distribution for private and public limited companies. Well, shareholders in companies, private or public, will receive dividends. Dividends! And they relate to the annual profits. The annual profits, they relate. But they are ultimately, the dividends themselves, whether they're paid or the size of them, well, that's to the discretion, to the decision of the board of directors. So while they're related approximately to the annual profits, ultimately it's up to those board of directors to make the decision of if they're paid and how much dividends will be. Moving on to liability, whether it's limited or unlimited for each business ownership structure. So for sole traders, clearly you're going to have unlimited liabilities. And for partnerships, also you're going to have unlimited liabilities. However, in the case of partnerships, other partners beyond you in the partnership, well, you are also responsible for their, their negligence or any misconduct that they do. In the worst case scenario, you would also be accountable for your personal assets because you are all faced with unlimited liability in the partnership, regardless of whose fault it was between the partners. Private limited companies and public limited companies, clearly it's got limited in the name, so they have limited liability. Limited liability, so therefore shareholders' personal possessions are not at risk. What is at risk is the investments the shareholders have made into the company. Moving on to management and control. So in the case of a sole trader, they're going to have full management and control of the business, but that means they're going to have no support in this decision making. However, they could buy in specialist services if they wanted to pay for it, of course. Moving on to partnerships, well, that's going to be based on the deeds of partnership once again, about who has the management and control and how much they have. The private and public limited companies are slightly different here. So the management and control in a private limited company, well, it's common for a private limited company for the founder to be the managers and the owners, have the shares in them. So therefore, the issue of the divorce of ownership and control is less likely to happen versus in a public limited company where it is more likely to happen that you get this issue between the divorce, the split of ownership, ownership that is in the case of the uh, shareholders and control, which is the managers. So you, there's two different factions here, two different stakeholders within the business. Um, so therefore you might have this issue of divorce of ownership and control, more likely in public limited companies. 
Moving on to S, the S in plums is sources of finance available. So for a sole trader, the sources of finance available, well, they're not going to have access to share capital. They can't go down the equity finance route. They're a sole trader. But theoretically, you could actually secure some larger debt against your personal possessions because you have unlimited liability and therefore there is no split in the legal entity between you, the individual and the business. Although that's really risky because it's your personal assets, possibly your house. In the case of partnerships, where well, you're going to have access to your finance and other partners' finance. Um, but it's also worth remembering here, you're still, you're an unincorporated business, unincorporated organisation, and therefore you're going to have no access to share capital. In the case of private limited companies, well now you're going to, because you're a company, you're going to have access to share capital, but it's got to be from known, known, known investors, but not the stock exchange, because the stock exchange is what the public limited companies um, have access to in order to generate Whoa! Enormous finance, okay? So public limited companies, they have access to stock exchange capital. They can generate massive amounts of finance there. But there is always a risk of a takeover because you are on the stock exchange.